July 2021, but he's ran second to Acromantial in the Rock Magic Stakes, ran second to Amelia's Jewel in the Roma Cup last time out. The draw hurts his chances. I think he can get to the breeze if they want to, but I imagine they'll try to ride him perhaps three deep with cover. When he can get there, I think he can run a big race. The seven is resort, man. We just saw Danny Morton win a Karakata. He has a slot in this race. Things went wrong with his own horses, so he's combined with another local trainer in Michael Lane with this slot. Brad Rawilla rides. And wonderful synergy as well. Michael Lane and Dan Morton, wonderful mates. Brad Rawilla uh, was one of the stable jockeys for Dan Morton when he was based here in Perth. And in my opinion, Resort Man is the next best chance out of the locals outside of Amelia's Jewel. I thought he was the run of the race outside of the filly in the Roma Cup last start. Uh, he flies second up. He loves soft ground. Last preparation, he won four of his nine starts. He won three listed races in a Group 3. He's really progressed over the last 12 months, and I think he's well-placed here. The members' floor at Perth Racing may well uh, start to rumble if Hot Zed looms up in the slot of Perth Racing, Lou Luciani and Chris Parnham. Well, he goes around 50 to 1, but why not? He's 48 days between runs, but he's always been an underrated war horse. He's won 10 of his 31 starts. Uh, this is probably the toughest test of his career to date, but he was only beaten a length and a half in a winter bottom stakes, ran the fastest last furlong after drawing the outside in the gold rush. So he's more than capable, and he has Chris Parnham aboard. Western Knight is the nine for Peter's Investments, Adam Durant and William Pike. By far the lowest rated horse in the race, so he's uh, clearly the least suited under the weight for age scale, but he is untapped, he is exciting. Look, I, um, not for me today, considering he's th he carries the same weight as a horse like Kementari that he's rated 39 Metropolitan points lower than, but Adam Durant has a really big opinion of this horse, and a quote from earlier today, he said if you take out the filly, he wouldn't swap his horse for any others in the race. That's a big statement. Bella Nipotina is the 10, representing Ladbrokes, Kieran Ma, Dave Eustace and Ben Mellon. The logical danger to Amelia's Jewel for mine, a huge barrier and map winner. I think it's a lovely run here. Ben Mellon aboard. The last time he was here, he rode this track distance to win a winter bottom stakes. He, uh, this filly, oh, this mare now, won the Matacado on a heavy eight. She drew the outside and the William Reed savaged the line. The soft track today is ideal. She should be hard to beat. Bjorn Baker has the 11 shades of rose with a magic racing, magic bloodstock racing slot. Rachel King rides. Came through benchmark races last campaign that ended up winning a group two, made a really good progression, has won seven of 12 now. She's trialled up really well ahead of this first up assignment. Uh, uh, sorry, a third up assignment, I should say. She hasn't had any luck her first two runs back with tardy getaways. The synthetic hoof filler goes on, but she's drawn barrier one. She should get a lovely run. Asfura is the 12, representing sports bet with the those special colours made with the quokka on Henry Dwyer and Mitch Aitken. That's outstanding, isn't it? 28 days between runs here. Has only ever been past 1,100 metres once in her 10 starts, but she was held up and ran the fastest last 200 metres split in the Galaxy last uh, time out. So I don't think the 1,200's an issue. Just needs an ounce of luck from the gate. Bustler is the 13 for Jack Lestia Thoroughbreds, Neville and Steve Parnham. Uh, one of the two three-year-olds in the race, and uh, he was a top three-year-old in Perth in his own right, but just unfortunate to bump into a, a, a potential freak like Amelia's Jewel who had his measure throughout uh, the spring. It was a really good run first up though in the Roma Cup. He drew barrier 13, settled last and ran the fastest last furlong of the race. And here she is, your favourite, Amelia's Jewel, Simon Miller and Paddy Carberry representing Tab Touch who of course won last night at Gloucester Park and they're donating any percentage of their prize money to charity. Only beaten once in her eight start career and she probably had excuse as well that day with uh, a couple of issues behind the scenes. She's an out-and-out -out star. She won the Group 2 Guineas. She won the Group 1 Northerly Stakes. She returns in a blaze of glory, winning over 1,100 metres last start. She's drawn the outside here, and uh, she is a little bit easy in betting uh, over the, since that barrier draw. But look, the last five Winterbottom Stakes, which are 1,200 metre high-pressure races run here in Perth, the winners have drawn barriers 15, 16, 12, 13 and 13 respectively. They've all drawn wide. Three of them have come from near last because they are such high pressure races where invariably the winner is in that three wide line peeling down the middle part of the track. I'm not concerned about the white draw uh, at all. The main thing I'm concerned about is the fact that uh, it has been more of an on speed day today but look if she can blend in stay out of trouble I think uh, she'll be super hard to hold out late. Well, we're about to have the singing of the national anthem before the running of the quokka. We are already two minutes behind start time. 
Kelly Kinnamon, stable foreman for Simon Miller, just walked past and said, Kel, how are you feeling? And she said, I'm nervous now. Put a hand on her stomach and no doubt she'll be feeling these nerves. As this national anthem is sung, your top four numbers in the inaugural running of the $4 million quokka, Michael. I'm with the Philly Brit, 14 Amelia's jewel. I think she's a star in the outside draw, isn't a big concern. From 10, Bella Nipotina, a big map and a draw winner here. She'll get a lovely run and she has the, the right form on the board. Four Uncommon James will need luck from the draw, but if he gets across, he can be there for a long way, as can two Overpass, who's trolled up really well. Second to Nature Strip, first up last time in. But I think if the filly is to be beaten, it'll be by an East Coast Raider. 14, 10, 4 and 2. Lockie, you've had a look at them in the yard. Who did you like? 14, Amelia's jewel for me, Brittany. I think she comes into this race as her grand final. I love the way she paraded this afternoon. I had a few good looks at her out the back. She was lovely and relaxed, and she came into the mounting yard in the exact same order. Wouldn't have turned her hair in the mounting yard. She just is such a charismatic filly. She's not overly big, but that's just her. We already know she has a motor, and I think we'll show that. We'll see that today. As a blowout, I think Kementari at the big each way odds, 16 17 dollars he's around. I think he'll run a bottle. All right. So Lockie there with Amelia's jewel is his pick of the yard, but Kementari also catching the eye if you're looking at something at a bigger quote. Michael with the filly as well. We talk about that gate, barrier 14, Michael, but when you go to our Group 1 winter bottom stakes, run at this very journey, 1,200 metres at Ascot, recency would tell us it's not the worst thing. Absolutely. These races are always run at such a frantic tempo and it's usually those horses that are out of trouble, three deep with cover, out of the speed battle as well that can blend in late and run over the top of them. So although it's been more of an on-speed day today, I think with the pressure in this race, Amelia's Jewel can uh, certainly do that. She can be out of trouble. She may be close enough to last, but if she can track up the right horses, I think they're going to be doing really well to beat her here. An enormous crowd gathers. Rival jockeys stand along the fence and in the mountain yard to watch this. This is a moment in history, the richest race in Perth Racing's history. Upstairs to Darren McCauley for the call of the $4 million Tad Touch Quokka. The Queenslander. Indications are he'll be spelled after this and then aimed up possibly at the Everest. But Amelia's Jewel as Fura and Uncommon James are the last three runners to make their way up into the starting gates at the 1200. The moment has come. Will it come for the talk of Australian racing at the moment? The filly Amelia's Jewel. The Queenslander Uncommon James. Group one star. They'll be the last of them to come up. Gates 13 and 14. And they're almost set and ready. Amelia's Jewel in the Amelia Park colours as the starter gets onto the ladder. The hearts are pumping. They're ready. Set. Lights on. Stand by. He holds them there. All clear. Racing in the quokka. First of them to get going. Certainly jumping fast is overpass. And as Fura got out very quickly, red can man, Uncommon James comes across. Carberry's gone straight back to last with Amelia's Jewel. And Bella Nipotina's back there with her as well. The sparks fly early on, though. Over on the outside as Fura testing overpass. Red can man tries to slot across. Getting up on the inside next of all is Shades of Rose running about fourth. Followed by Uncommon James, three deep from Massimo. Hot Zed tricks of the trade. A length away, Resort Man. Kevin Tari pushing up for Oliver down near the inside, then Bustler followed further back. Western Knight, Bella Nipotina strung up near the rail, and Carberry's back last of all with Amelia's Jewel spotting the leader. Seven or eight legs, 400 left to go. Straightening up now in the Quokka over pass. As Fura going toe to toe, they're giving each other the big eyeball. Red Can Man joined them both though. A length and a half, Uncommon James letting down. Where's Amelia's Jewel? Back in the field, but running on strongly. As Fura over pass, Red Can Man, 100 left to go. Overpass as for Amelia's Jewel coming. She's coming at the rate of knots. Overpass. Amelia's Jewel. She lunged. Did she get there? I don't know. 
through. She came. She came like a train. Amelia's jaw got to overpass in the shadows. A photo here in the quokka. Behind them, close up. Hot Zed's there. Also Bustler. Bella Nipotina. Then came behind them. Shades of Rose. Massimo Resort Man. And also as Fura Kementari. Uncommon James. Tricks of the trade. Western Knight. Overpass Amelia's Jewel. We wait. Overpass has won it. Overpass. Ridden by Josh Parr. Has held on to win by a short half head. Number two, Overpass has won from Amelia's Jewel, 10, Bella Nipotina. And fourth is number 12, Asfura. What a result for the slot holders, Ram Racing. They had them at the Harness. They had them at the Greyhounds. And now they've got overpass for Bjorn Baker, Josh Parr. In 109.53, 34.86 the split. Overpass, fired on speed, fresh, wonderful training performance by Bjorn Baker and written by Josh Parr, the Vancouver four-year-old from Walkway, has held on by a breath from this mighty filly, Amelia's Jewel, who came from last of 14 and has gone within inches of claiming a remarkable victory. But it's the Sydney four-year-old overpass who wins the first edition of this $4 million race. Amelia's Jewel, Patrick Carberry, for only the second time in her career, suffers a defeat. And Bella Nipotina, who was back with her, Ben Millam, by Pride of Dubai from Bella Vafana, for Kiramar, David Eustace, has finished third. Two, 14 and 10. Two, 14 and 10 will be your numbers. Win number six at start number 21 for overpass and what a win it was. Riding the tough speed there, Amelia's Jewel. Wow, what a performance in for second, the three-year-old filly. More than living up to expectations, but misses by a pimple. $1.70, Amelia's Jewels runs second. Bella Nipotina, $1.80 runs third. The mayor as well. Two, 14 and 10. Born Baker presents the four-year-old overpass. First up in Perth and he scores the inaugural running of the $4 million quokka.